welcome to Bonus Sesh. I'm Casey Wilson. I'm Danielle Schneider. I just want to say thank you all for buying the premium uh, channel, yeah. if you will. We really do have amazing fans, and I consider them friends, because we all too. like the same things. I will say that there is a commonality between us and our listeners, which is like we all have the same interest. And They're so attractive. Yeah, very attractive. No Uggs. Mm-mm. Don't want no Uggs. <laughs> I don't want no Uggs. Um, you're attractive people. You're funny and you're smart and you get it. Whatever it is, you get it. And I'm going to segue us into our topic mm-hmm. right now, which is that our beloved astrologer, Heidi Rose Robbins, has honestly given readings to, she thinks, about 200 of you wow. fans. She said every single person has Scorpio running through their chart. Now, I'm a Scorpio, Danielle. Yeah, I have it in my chart. I'm not a Scorpio, but I have it in my chart. It's a powerful sign. It's one to be wrestled with, and (laughs) it is a burden. It is, but we all... But it's strong. It's it's a strong sign. I like Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And that's who our listeners are. Yeah. It's really interesting. And we all like similar things, and that's why we wanted to sort of do this podcast today, because we wanted to talk about some things that we have done for better or for worse in our grown up years that have been sort of self help. And we thought you guys would be interested to know, because like I said, we have a lot of common, common interests. Exactly. And I think this, I think of this episode as kind of like, remember on the Oprah show years ago when it was going great (laughs) and Oprah tried to turn the entire show into like a spiritual show. She even called it something different. It was like like, in your best life or like, he was a little very spiritual yeah. and the fans revolted. Yeah. So, so we, we hope, hope that doesn't happen. doesn't happen. But now, as she said on Super Soul Sunday, if anyone's, which is something you should all be listening Unbelievable to. Unbelievable podcast. But she has said on Super Soul Sunday that uh, of the podcast that, um, that though the fans revolted years ago, that movement has come around and Un- people she are was ahead of her time. Yes, of course. So we hope that we were ahead of our time. Well, I'm going to start with Super Soul Sunday, Danielle. <laughs> Because this is a small thing I feel like you can do. And when it was on TV, I'll admit, I I even had a good run for about a month where Mm -hmm. I tried to do what she said, which was like settle in front of the TV on Sunday in a robe and like make it my day of rest. But then you have kids and that goes out the window. Exactly. So now when I'm driving, we live in Los Angeles. We have a lot of long drives. I feel like it makes you a multitasker. When you throw on Super Soul Sunday... You're trying to grow. And I'll just reveal a quote I heard yesterday from, I don't know his name, uh, a guy. <laughs> not important. <laughs> not important. He basically is a professor of happiness at Harvard University. I haven't listened to this he one He teaches yet. a course on how to be happy, and it's the most popular course at Harvard. And it was really, really interesting. He said what he has found in all his scientific studies, this isn't just like that woman that wrote the happiness project. Sorry. I just dislike that thing where she's like, take a bath, look at nature. (laughs) He said the most important thing you can, the the art of happiness is not necessarily in like what you're doing, but is in the optimism that there is more to come. So if you're kind of, and it's not even about not being in the present, but if you're always, you know, whenever you reach a goal, the problem is people think it's going to bring happiness. So then you're instantly like, you might celebrate that night, but the next day the goal shifts. And, and you have a come down from it too. As well. Totally. And then you're like, okay, I got this, but, but now I want this. And that's our culture. But he said, it's actually not really a bad thing. Maybe if it's like material items, but just in terms of goals for yourself, as long as you can stay optimistic, Mm -hmm. if you're like, well, now I'll never get there. But Mm -hmm. if you can kind of, you have that fire in you, that's like, maybe something amazing will happen. That feeling is basically happiness. Well, I also listened to another one by Sebastian Younger. Is that how Young? younger you know he wrote um into thin air i'm proud you impressed you are getting names (laughs) yeah i'm one step ahead i called him that guy (laughs) that guy you said he works at harvard um he wrote um john no john krakow no no it's sebastian younger he didn't write into thin air he wrote um restrepo and uh, so many other things and oh uh just a bunch of uh, amazing books and he is basically was like in in Iraq and Afghanistan and like with soldiers and said that another thing that gives us happiness, like a lot of those soldiers, once they had left those areas, even though they were, you know, facing death every day and the worst conditions you could live in, that there was a happiness there and that people miss it because 
you cared more for others than you did for yourself. And he said there was a sense of happiness like during the Blitz during World War II in London because people were helping each other and they were in with their community and you would, and you cared about other people. You would help a neighbor. There was this sense of living for other people. A Banding sense, together. Yes, a sense of community. And now in our world... There isn't that, you know, like just because of the way the world works, we're not going to our neighbor's house for sugar because we need it. Like, and that's, and because, you know, especially in cultures where there's more money, is Amazon Prime. Yeah, exactly. And so there is a feeling of isolation and isolation causes depression. And that's why even you can be living in the worst possible circumstances, but if you're helping others, if you feel like you're contributing toward the community and that you're, uh, someone is more important than you, um, it provides a sense of happiness. Wow. And I thought that that was astounding. That was like, whoa, that was a real, like come to Jesus moment for me. That's a real, whoa. Yeah. I, I was like, wow. You know, when they mentioned the blitz, so I was in heaven. <laughs> Cause we <laughs> know sure you'd be dead. a pig and shit oh, during yeah. the blitz. <laughs> no, I would be dead. I'd be dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. You wouldn't be alive. No. <laughs> wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. But I just thought it was an amazing episode and it really, it, but, but so I have really been liking Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. I think it has been informative in many ways. And I listen in my car and it's because I wasn't watching the show. But yes, listening in my car has been life changing for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Another podcast I listen to in my car, which I mentioned briefly on the other show that is a self-help, is Esther Perel's podcast. It is called Where Should We Begin? Now, she's a, a psychotherapist mm -hmm. and she interviews couples one time. So she's never met these people. She interviews them for a while, like three to four hours, and they condense it down to an hour. And she kind of does voiceover to transition us from moment to moment. But these couples are coming in with some deep issues. I'm not talking about... I'm honestly not even necessarily talking about one person cheated. Mm -hmm. These are even deeper and darker things that you think there is no world in which we could surpass this mm -hmm. impotence. Um, very just yeah, tough I heard, things. I heard one and it wasn't just cheating. It was like serial cheating. Exactly. For like 50 years, yeah. like, like an insane thing. We were like, fuck this. And what, where she goes with these couples and what she gets to there, it's so informative for any relationship you have, even if it's not romantic, it's unbelievable how she, it seems always like it's going to be one way where like this person cheated. So he's bad. She's good. And often it's the reverse. Wow. Where should we begin, Esther Perel? Now, what about you, Danielle? What would you say since you moved to LA? Because a lot of these things have come to Danielle and I after our move to LA. Yes, yeah, most of them. But LA, you know, California's the gold rush. It's the wild west. It's the frontier. Yeah, and it just it it's so, the weather is nice. It gets you to do to think about yourself, to think about taking care of yourself. Because often you don't have a job. Yeah, out here. <laughs> and in New York, it's like life is hard. So just surviving. Hard scrabble. Yeah, like you're just like uh, especially in New York, I was young I was penniless like just getting a slice of pizza at the end of the day felt like what I was that was the struggle 100% out and here a little more time on your hands yeah. and yes I do want to acknowledge a lot of these things we're mentioning come from a very privileged place yes. of having the means and the time to even look inward but I will say some of them we're at a time where even when I came out here, I was waitressing full time, mm. did not have a job. I did not have a lot of money. Granted life, you know, like I have worked harder. I have, my career has gotten better and bigger, but I will say that like when I first came out here, because I think I was like driving around and driving myself crazy and doing things that were making me miserable, like waitressing a lot of the time, I needed to find some self-help. So what, what, what was the kind of biggest thing you found to kind of equalize your equilibrium and just help make you happy despite not maybe doing exactly what you wanted to be doing? Mm -hmm. I would say the thing, <laughs> one of the first things that made me happy while I was still waitressing, mind you, and also teaching improv classes was a facial. And I know that that seems, and I, again, hmm. I was not making money. I was spending money. Well, so that's a splurge. Yeah, it was a splurge. It, it is still now. And that facialist ended up being Kyle Richards' facialist. Pause. Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. And it's funny and how it came. I'm not going to tighten up that pause and post because <laughs> everyone needed to feel it because everyone was feeling it. Yeah. Now we all remember that episode, but I was going to her. You knew before. her when. I knew her when. She was just running kind of like a mom and pop shop out of basically a guest house in Encino. And, <laughs> and it was recommended to me by, of course, our dear friend, Jessica Chaffin, who mm. I've been friends with 
for a hundred years. Jessica we, Chaffin, as I've said, is the Nora Ephron. Yes. Of our group, friend yes. group. If she's you a need connector. anything, she's got it. She's got a number. And I said, I'm looking for a good facialist, but I cannot afford like one of these like amazing places that, you know, you see in Hollywood. Like I just couldn't afford it, but I knew I needed it. But again, I was like waitressing and teaching. I didn't have any money to my name. I was living in like a leaky house in the valley. Like it was not <laughs> good times for me, but I knew that for some reason, like my skin was going crazy and I also was depressed. I was officially depressed and I knew a facial made me feel well, but I also knew I couldn't afford one at the time. And so I started to see this facialist with a very unorthodox method, which you guys have seen since on like that first season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Basically, you are in a mask that looks like Silence of the Lambs and she shoots electricity through you. (laughs) (laughs) I got to say, sitting across from you, it's working. Well, I haven't done it in a while. So thank you. Thank you. But um, it just made you feel better. It made me feel better. And it made my face look better. And you know, your face is what you see. It's your fortune. Yeah. (laughs) For me, it's not. My face has never gotten me my work. But it is what you see every day. You have to come face to face with that, especially in LA where you're not seeing your friends as much and like you're your friend. Face to face indeed. Yeah, like, and you're in your car all the time. So you're looking in that mirror, the, your back mirror and- Speaking of, if you live in LA, tint your windows. We don't want those UV rays getting on your arms and face. What? Oh God, I haven't done it yet. Guys. Oh, I should do that. Come on. Haven't done it. Wow. So a so, facial, you know, and that's interesting because sometimes it's a little thing like that when you least feel able to take mm-hmm. care of yourself, once you do it, it is almost like working like from the outside in. It was called Karina Facial Studio. I have a feeling she's a lot more now um, than when I saw her years and years ago. But it was one of the first steps I took in LA as a poor person that needed something to help them to lift them out of a fog. Wow, beautiful. And that was something. And then, of course, she ends up on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I mean, if that is not Kismet, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> it seems like her career progressed right alongside yours. Sure did. Now, Casey, what about you? When you first came out here, what was something? Well, this was a few years into coming out here, but it was the biggest, made the biggest difference in my life for sure. And I did it with Ms. June Diane Raphael. She wrote me into this, of course. And this... <laughs> you two are, to me, a true life Laverne and Shirley. You two, the adventures that you two have together, like that you guys need to be on TV together. And that's obvious. Like I... I and, and if you guys did watch the movie, ask backwards, because that is their relationship. Well, June wrote me in via one Whitney Cummings, another <laughs> girlfriend of ours, who was Whitney was my first friend out here. And Whitney was always up on the latest self-help. And it was always very strange. She wanted to like cart us off to horse therapy and this and that <laughs> and the other. And Whitney had me over once and wanted a man to come over and take all the like electrobes out. Of, I don't even know what that is. Like, out of my house yeah. and tell me to unplug stuff. This is a method. It's called the Grinberg method. <laughs> I think you tried to email me about this. <laughs> G-R-I-N-B-E-R-G. There is one practitioner of this in the United States. Is it by the, someone by the name of Grinberg? <laughs> <laughs> no. Her name is Rahel Putter. P-U-T-T-E-R. Now, I'm going to keep this brief because, of course, the practitioner is in L.A. And I know our listeners are everywhere. But... Her, she was just did Heidi Rose Robbins podcast, mm. which is unbelievable. It's Heidi is our, <laughs> is our astrologer and mm-hmm. she has a new podcast called the Radiance Project. Mm-hmm. And on it, she interviews amazing, fascinating people, some performers, some not. And she interviews people through their astrological charts. Wow. And she interviews Rachel Putter in this and it's actually body work. In its briefest form, it's basically like the body doesn't lie. You're, you might think you're over something or you might think something's devastating you in your head, but that's actually a result of your triggers from your childhood and you're making things bigger than they are. And sometimes when she works with the body and literally it's kind of like massage on a table, she'll shift energy or open up pathways for energy and the wildest things happen. You could go in there devastated about something. And when she shifts the energy, you realize I actually don't care about that at all. Wow. It's wild. And she lets energy go. She says like there's certain things like your body is, is trapped in your body from years and years and years ago. And you can actually make headway with things. You know, we all have our issues. We keep yeah. coming back to that is our challenge. Mm-hmm. She'll like press on your shoulders for 10 minutes. And it's, it, it is, it is as though childhood or early adolescent trauma is being released. Wow. It's wild. And you felt complete, like you felt lighter. You did you oh, let go of some things yes. that you know that you thought were things 100%. for you? 100%. And June and I, of course, did a group therapy session with her for a year. Were you in charge of it? No. <laughs> 
it was with all walks of life. When I tell you it was a motley, motley crew. I think you tried. That's the one I think you emailed me. Motley crew. <laughs> but June and I came to love and it was so helpful. And her whole thing is that we have patterns in life. Where, for instance, you always brush your teeth in the same way and maybe you use, you have the same order in the shower. Her whole thing is is truly breaking up our everyday routines and habits to give our life more variety, even from in the simplest form. Wow. Now that's striking a chord with me mm. because I am a, a creature of habit. And sometimes that's comforting, mm-hmm. but you can still make some changes within a structure that feels comforting. Like, uh, but I believe like small changes, just tiny. It's like the butterfly effect in your life. Yes. And her, the word that she uses to describe her work is a powerful one. And it's just will. Everything is your will. And some people have a strong will and some people have a weak will. And you have to build up your will. And if you want something, you use your will to get it. Jeez. Wow. What's next, Danielle? Now, I did acupuncture. Mm. Something I never thought I'd do in my life because I never like needles. I I don't like pain. Like, it seems weird if you haven't does. done it. It does. It does. I'm like, I'm a massage person. Like, I'll let anyone touch me. I will let a stranger on the street give me a back rub. I do not care. Like, I love just to be like cradled in somebody's arms. <laughs> and, but acupuncture feels like not that to me. It feels sort of cold. And even though it's Eastern, I have nothing wrong with like Eastern medication, but I just, it just didn't seem like me. Um, but I was going through fertility issues and I was desperate to curb them. And, and my doctor, like a doctor had said, I think, um, this might help. I think acupuncture while you're going through fertility issues, I found it to be very helpful with my, uh, my fertility doctor had suggested it. And so I tried it. And from the first day I was hooked, it was more relaxing than any massage I've ever had. I found myself more relaxed than I would ever be. Like uh, my mind wasn't spinning. It wasn't busy with everything. No, it was. They, whatever points that they were pressing on, I found this wonderful um, acupuncturist, but you can go anywhere all over the country. There's great people. Her name was Ganit. She was Israeli. And, um, and she, I mean, I, 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 and you can write it off with medical insurance, which is great. Not all of it, but some of it, which was very helpful. And it just took me to a place where I'd never felt my body and my mind so free like that. Wow. Yeah. And you didn't back get pregnant. I did get pregnant. I mean, again, I also did IVF and yes, other things. No, so. and, and, but I know so many women it struggle was, with that and it's so devastating. I found it helpful. I did find it very, very helpful. And I it, think it's it nothing. Well, not that there would be nothing more. Obviously the goal mm-hmm. is to get pregnant, but at least it's such a harrowing, devastating experience. And so anxious. And mm-hmm. especially when you've dealt with loss along the road yeah. to it, that it sounds also just beautiful to help you go through the emotions that accompany infertility. Mm-hmm. I would like, it was better than like a three hour nap, whatever it was doing for my body. I can't explain it, but it was relaxing me in a way that I have never felt before or since. And so I'm so grateful to have opened my mind to that practice. And I think it works not just for pregnancy. I think it can work for so many other Mm. things, especially like I've heard back pain, chronic, chronic conditions, stress. If you're going through a tough time, I would suggest acupuncture if you can do it. And you and for those with medical insurance, I think you can write it off uh, some of it anyway. Beautiful. So anyway, what about you, Case? Well, I touched on her. Mm -hmm. I'm going to touch on her again. (laughs) Our astrologer. Yes. Heidi Rose Robbins. Uh, Heidi Rose Robbins. Her father is a world-renowned astrologer, so she truly grew up like a gypsy, like learning the trade. mm -hmm. And she even has kind of a different practice than her father, and she's heart-centered, which means she's not a psychic, first of all, but... The amount of things she has predicted for our friend group has been staggering. Staggering. You said it best once yeah. on the podcast, I believe, but I think it bears repeating, which is that you you were struggling mm-hmm. with infertility and she up and told you you were going to be pregnant in a certain time frame. Yeah. She was like, I'm seeing this. And that is a bold, bold thing as hell. to say to a woman. I would that, disbar her from the certificate she does not have. I know, but that's a bold thing to tell a woman who has been struggling Openly, And I'll be honest, when you told our group of friends that, Mm -hmm. and we call ourselves the housewives because we all would gather first to Mm -hmm. watch the real housewives. And you guys were watching me go through this struggle and there for me. Yes, and I was privately a little worried. I kind of felt like, ooh. 
it's tough to say to someone who's going through that because it's almost like on some level guaranteeing them something that, you know, there is no way of guaranteeing. And it's such a delicate subject, it, it, I, but she God knows you did. True. But she's also helped through tough times because she helps you see how you're going to manage things like, uh, you know, w- with stuff I've been going through to hear her voice and to see what tools I'm going to be using in the next few Because she looks months. ahead at your chart and she'll look ahead at the year that's coming up and it, it is counterintuitive because I've been going through my pregnancy was a very dark time for me and I was very depressed actually. And I would call her and you would think it would be a downer to hear someone say like, well, you're going to basically be depressed for five more months. But actually, it's very validating because there's just something about someone saying to you like, yes, I see what you're going through and it's going to continue, but it's also going to lift. Yeah. And it's also like, it's not someone being like, oh, just take a walk, get out in nature. It's like, that's not helpful. It's saying, no, this is real. You are feeling this. It's real. It's dark. It's deep. You're living in it. You're swimming in these waters. That's okay. You can swim. And because, I I mean, obviously we can't go into all the astrological subtleties and nuances for what she does, but she will also give you very specific dates and times. Mm -hmm. She's predicted money windfalls. She's, she's, she's so optimistic. Yeah. And she's really told me to focus on things in my life that I never would have. Like my house was always a complete mess to, to a level that it would shock people. And when you, you would get in my car and this is true still to some degree, but you'd open it and things would fall out like, <laughs> like, onto a, the like ground. a closet in a cartoon, yes. like a blazer and a bra and a fork, <laughs> things that have no business being in a car. It's gotten slightly better, but the reason it's gotten better is because Heidi told me you think of yourself as someone who enjoy, who doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like you're fine to be a slob. You're fine to have no beauty in your life. You, those aren't the things that matter to you. She was actually quite the opposite, but you're afraid to even try to get there because you don't think you can. So you need to, and again, I know this takes money, but it has boosted. I actually think my own financial success. Yeah. She said, you must hire someone to help you. Wow. You you basically don't have the skill set to make this happen for yourself. <laughs> she knows your weaknesses and her strengths. Yeah. She told me um, dates, specific dates to break up with someone. Wow. And she gave me a key word to repeat over and over in my head, which was grace. She didn't do it gracefully. And you know what? I do think of you as a person with a lot of grace. Mm, thank I you, do. Danielle. Wow. Thank you. Well, she also, and I'm sorry to go on and on about her, but we, we just we have, have so to. much great stuff to say about her, but uh, I'm going through some stuff and I kept saying to her, I feel as if a wave is coming at me and I can see this huge wave and I see it in the distance and I know it's there and it's real and I am waiting for it to sweep me and everything I know away. Like I am just waiting for this wave to take over. And she said, you're right. There's a wave. Wow. She said, there is a wave coming. How did that make you feel? I was shocked. And she said, but here's where I'm seeing is you're going to not, the wave isn't coming at you. The wave is coming to carry you forward. Wow. And she was like, so it is moving you. She said, it is, think of it as carrying you towards, not coming on you, but carrying you towards good things. That's so beautiful. And I... It changed the way, uh, not that hard, yeah, it's, it's not that hard things aren't real and that they're not coming and that you don't have to live through them and deal with them, but it is that it's going to be okay. It's, you're going to survive it and end up in a good place and it's all going to be okay. And to reframe it for me, I'm so, I, I'm so daunted, you know, you still daunted, you still have your fears, you still have, the, and you still have to take the steps you have to take to change yes, things. Yes, of course. But the reframing of it was, it just made me breathe. It, made me, it gave me my breath back. You know what I mean? So that was, wow. She's quite amazing. Quite something. So obviously if you couldn't afford a session, although she does Skype sessions mm-hmm. and she does mini sessions, Heidi Rose Robbins, uh, you can just look her up online and how to get to her. But she has a podcast called The Radiance Project, which is mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah. Um, some other things that we are kind of (laughs) doing, uh, to, um, I will say also, yeah, like some other like little things that we do in a day, um, a workout class I'm doing. I know I've spoken a little bit about it. Um, you know, I exercise is so important and it is like something I hate doing. I don't enjoy it. But I feel like I'm, every time I call you, you're like, Hey, I'm on the treadmill. (laughs) 
<laughs> we have one at your house and you are really the exception. I've never met one person who has a treadmill that actually uses it. <laughs> well, it goes sometimes months without, without use. But I will say I was going through a time where I was at a job and very unhappy at that job. And it was a struggle to get through that job. And what I found to be the only thing that kept me, because you, when you're at a job, you have to be there for long amounts of time and you, and you're there and you can't get out of it. You know no. what I mean? And so what I did was I started, I started exercising, not for body, for mind. Lord and knows you don't need it for body. No, <laughs> no I'm not saying that. No, believe me. I, I still want to look good in every single way uh, because, you know, I, I might be slim, but like my, I look like two little rubber bands sometimes. And it's like when the skin hangs, it's not great. Um, but it was, it did everything for my head. It did everything for my head. Exercising. How long are we talking? 30 minutes a day. That's it. 30. Well, my exercise class is an hour. So that class is an hour, but I on the treadmill 30 minutes and it lifted my spirits in a way that wow. I just needed to get through my day. And you also feel good because you're like, oh, I'm moving. I'm, you know, and I'm running. I'm running. Well, I heard from a psychiatrist once that exercise regularly is akin to taking a low to medium level dose of Zoloft. Really? 100%. That's the effect it has on the brain. It is so powerful. Yeah. I'll tag on to that very briefly in saying, obviously, you know, my new, I'm a devotee of one Lacey Stone yes. fitness. Follow her on Instagram. You will I die. To. I have you to. will die. It's so inspiring and amazing. And she teaches flywheel classes, but she's also on uh, revenge body. And she's just has, she's the most supportive, powerful person in the fitness realm that I've ever, wow. ever seen. Yeah. I like my workout teacher. Her name is Irene Banks. She is Billy Blanks's or bro- sister. So From Billy Blanks' Tybo. sister's name is Irene Banks? No, I think it's Blanks. I, I don't know. I'm, it's on Instagram. <laughs> I love it. Seems her. like Billy Blanks' sister's last name would also be Blanks. <laughs> you know, it, it might seem like that. Let me find her on Instagram. Because I feel like his is Billy Blanks, but I feel like hers is Irene Banks. You are. A, you love the Blanks family. I do. I sure. Oh, it, is, it is Irene Blanks. <laughs> <laughs> of course it no is. Okay. It would be like... I don't know your sister being named like Caroline Schneider. <laughs> like it's possible, but she's great. And every morning on Instagram, she sort of pulls the telly, Teddy Mellencamp and that like, I'll be like, oh, I don't want to go to that class today. And sometimes I can just because of work and it's, but, um, but then she posts on Instagram. Like, I know you don't want to get out of bed, but guess what? You're going to feel great if you do. Mm. And it's just like what I need in the morning to like, look at that Instagram and see that. And then I well, get my ass to that and class. I'm going to tag onto that with our, maybe a final little comment, which is whatever the hell that guy's name was from the Oprah podcast that I listened <laughs> to, Sean something, I think about happiness. He said that doing one thing for yourself, for instance, that's like we call healthy in quotes, like an exercising yeah. every day. It can even be two minutes, such as if you only brush your teeth for one minute a day, you up it to two. Or if you only drink three glasses of water, you try to drink four. If you do even the smallest increment of thing that is good for you over the course of 21 days, it lifts your happiness by 80%. Because 80%? What, yes, what you're saying to yourself is I matter enough to do a little more. And once you start to do something healthy, you kind of think, I'm really healthy. So you start doing other things and it actually feels really good to do something you didn't think you could do. But I don't mean like run a marathon. Yeah. They said it's as small again as, so I said, I'm going to challenge myself to simply drink one liter of water. And that is a big thing for you because you do not like water. Right. He's, I hate water. <laughs> you made that clear. And I know many people don't have access to it. Yes. But that said, I'm, I am impressed. You're going to drink this whole thing? Well, I've had two sips. So <laughs> well, Jay's young. I just really don't like going to the bathroom. That's and I'm going to say something that's going <laughs> to take this into another realm, but mm-hmm. <laughs> really it is. Okay. We might have to cut it. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> another self-help technique I've used because I am often running very late. <laughs> as many as the time I go to the bathroom in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is definitely keeping. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so many questions. I'm trying to no, formulate <laughs> what I have to ask. And I mean, I plan ahead too. You go to the bathroom in your car. Yes. No, not with a diaper, as you would maybe suspect. Although bottom. one time I do that on a long car ride <laughs> <laughs> to pull out my son's diaper <laughs> because he was sleeping in the back. 
<laughs> I was driving alone with him to Ojai. I was so terrified if we woke up, we wouldn't get there. That was a separate situation. No, how are you going to the bathroom? What I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> is parking. Okay, you gotta be parked. But I've even done it when people are like walking by the car. It can be done. Okay. Because your nether regions, your your lower trunk is under <laughs> like <laughs> Is under the door frame, right? So you, you, okay, you push your seat down as low as it'll go and you get into a, a squat. So you put your feet lodged on the floor and you raise your hips up. So it's, your legs will start shaking if it's too long, okay? And it's hard when your legs are shaking to let your body relax enough to go to the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I pull out normally, sometimes I'll ask for extra Starbucks <laughs> because I know I'm going to need it. <laughs> And I just, you pull your pants down. And the nice thing about Starbucks cup is it's big enough that it's there's no accidents yeah. because it, you know, like sometimes when you pee it in cup, it's so small, there's accidents. Yeah. I mean, usually I'm at a doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> the circumference is wide enough uh-huh. that you really can trust it. <laughs> and then the toughest part, I think we can admit is wiping. <laughs> oh, I was going to say is what to do with the urine. That I take care of immediately. <laughs> Where? Where, wherever I go, I make sure that's like the healthy thing I do for myself <laughs> is I make sure to throw that right out. But I'll tell you what, what I do to wipe, it's hard. What, so do you, you keep a roll around. in the car? Do you got to keep a roll oh, in the God, car? Oh, God, no, Danielle. God, no. I have to use what God's given me in the car. <laughs> Which Often is? Often a, a swaddle blanket or a <laughs> towel or a, a dirty sports bra. Uh, have you thought? <laughs> Maybe just keeping some toilet paper in the glove in the old glove compartment. Like you know, that's it's just like you don't want to plan. You like you admit. wouldn't plan to kill someone. You would no. just be in the crime of passion. So I'm not exactly <laughs> plan, I'm not hoping that this will happen and that I'll be all set when it does. I don't need any more encouragement to do it. Okay, it's happening about once every two weeks. Wow. Okay. Sometimes I have to do therapy in the car and I gotta go and I'm short for time. I have to cut corners. But you know what I appreciate about this? <laughs> I'm, thank you for finding something. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's hard to. But the one thing I'm appreciating about this is sometimes I have to pee so bad. No. So bad. And when you live in LA, you are on highways, you are in traffic. Like, it is tough to just And places get home. will not let you go in. No, and it's not easy to park somewhere in LA. Thank you. Thank you. So it's the process of just getting to a place where you can pee is so hard. And I'm always running late. <laughs> and sometimes I find myself having to stop or having to go home so fast. So the fact that this takes out that rush, that that fear, I'm that all about mad cutting corners. dash to your bathroom or to like you can't focus. Like it is fearful. It is. I'm filled with fear sometimes on my way, like on the 405. And the fact that you avoid it mm. is a gift. Well, there you have it, guys. <laughs> There's our self-help habits. Yeah, some high, some low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that I'll be you know, inspiring. Yeah, we, and we also didn't say that they were all going to be sort of expensive, sort of new age. <laughs> some of them are free. Sometimes free. The, the best thing is right in your car. The best things cup, in life are free. A Slurpee cup. <laughs> you really can also turn a, whatever cup you're working with. I really feel like you could get some deal from Starbucks out of this. <laughs> Wow, Danielle. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Premium.